Okay, I'm going to start off by talking about the role of the supervisor, just to make the expectations clear, right? A lot of students have already upset teachers by going to them and saying, I'm going to do quantum physics and stuff. Are you an expert on it? Will you help me with it, etc.? Yeah. Remember that a supervisor isn't really there to do the academic work for you. They're kind of like your project manager. Think of them more like a tutor rather than a subject teacher. Okay. You can have regular meetings with them, and after this session, I want you to make contact with them and work out when you're meeting. Okay. I've got five and I'm meeting them after school on Thursdays. That's the only time I can meet them, okay? So you've got to go to your uh, mentor and find out um, when it's convenient. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try and arrive at a title together. But I don't want you to stress too much about the title because uh, the title can be changed until Christmas. What I'd like you to get right straight away is the subject area that you're, ready, that you're going to research into, okay? Now, your supervisor is primarily there to manage you, as I said, to give you a bit of advice on resources and research methods, to help you fill in the production log, which we just had a look at, which is on the S drive, okay? And then, eventually, they're going to uh, mark your uh, EPQ and give you some feedback. They're going to train you in how to do a presentation, because we're going to have a really big deal open evening next year in October, in which we're going to invite the press and all kinds of people and film some of you and make it a really big deal because uh, it is a wonderful project yeah after they mark it I want you guys to finish it before the summer okay that would allow you then to look at all the marking get all the advice and fix it and do it over the summer yeah um, and obviously um, if you need additional help and your supervisor is unable to give you that for instance, I'm doing Hibber's one. I don't know if you guys know Hibber, who works in the library. She's applying for medicine. She is doing a study of how to use the Rio virus to kill cancer cells. How much do you think I know about that? Absolutely zero. I've already tried to get her in touch with a technical mentor. So it might be the case that you need to get a technical expert. And that is somebody that could be a parent, a parent's friend. It could be another teacher in the school could be someone from a university it doesn't matter who so if you're doing something like nanotechnology string theory quantum mechanics or something like that you might need somebody else okay and that's perfectly legal within the courts that's called a technical mentor so the supervisor will never chase you or conduct research for you or do the plan for you or fix up the project for you okay it is an independent project okay production log that we've talked about already what I want you guys to know, though, is the production log is as important as the project. So, the first thing to do now is to get a nice hardback book and to start keeping a diary. Because when you finish, when you start filling out the production log, it's going to ask you about the different stages of the project, okay? In many ways, we don't like to admit when we have difficulty and things like that. In the EPQ, you get marks for having difficulty, for showing resilience, and for saying, I couldn't do this, so I did this. So, in a way, you want obstacles in your EPQ, because that will actually help the grading of your project. And you want to keep a really good diary with dates of it, okay? Does everyone understand what I mean by that? Also, from the start, guys, I screwed up my first MA I did, shockingly, because I wrote loads of notes, but I forgot to take page numbers. I reckon that probably cost me two weeks of work, going back and trying to find page numbers, yeah? When you're reading, keep meticulous references of page numbers, titles, websites, because if you don't have them the first time and you go back to find them, it's really, really hard. Um, so, moving on then. First thing I'd say about choosing a title is, have you all decided your area that you want to go into? Are you interested? In Don't do what your parents want you to do. This is extra work. It's hard, isn't it? You know, this is something you're going to be doing during holidays and things like that, yeah. Make sure that you love what you're doing. Think about it really carefully now. Is it something that you want to find out about? If you use it really well, it's going to help your personal statement. If you choose the right area, it's going to be fantastic in university interviews. 
because you're going to go in as an expert. You do realise that you'll have a depth of knowledge that you won't get from any subject whatsoever. So make sure that you're passionate about it, you're really interested about it, and it will more or less write itself. Um, at the end of it, you're going to have your, uh, your project proposal, you're going to have a complete production log, you will have your 5,000 word research paper with all the references, and as I said, you'll give a presentation, and we're looking at that being late October next year. You'll also have to write a review and reflection section, and that will be the last section of your production log, where you actually look at and evaluate your performance during the project. Okay? So it's quite, there are quite a lot of elements to it here, yeah? and it is quite a complicated thing with quite a lot of paperwork. So you need to stay on top of it and not fall behind. So you need to remember you're going to research deeply. Okay, I'm looking into getting us research database access. So I'm hoping that we can get EBSCO and JSTOR. Those are the two biggest uh, databases in the world, and they're proper scientific, or in your case, James, you're looking at maybe philosophy or something like that. They will have journals, periodicals. And what I want you guys to realize is that when you start to look at periodicals and academic journals, they begin with an abstract. Have any of you seen that before? So the first thing that you could do now is start to use Google Scholar. Have any of you used it before? It's really simple. You just change the search to Google Scholar. You could watch a five-minute YouTube video of how to do it. I will show you next term, but get going now. If you look at proper academic articles, you'll see they begin with an abstract, which is, say, a three to 500-word summary of what the research does. That will save you a great deal of time because you can click through all the different papers and then you'll find the one that you want, you know, and it'll say, in this research, I'm doing this, I'm trying to find out this, etc., etc., and that will help you, okay? I've talked about your research uh, diary, so get cracking on that straight away. Now, what we're going to do today is mainly about how to come up with an appropriate title, and I'm hoping that you've all started on that. After today, you will go and see your supervisor and you will fill out part A of the production log. Uh, that is your proposed title. You'll speak to your supervisor and your supervisor will fill out part B. That is the bit that gives you advice. Then you'll uh, fill out part C, which is just, after speaking to my supervisor, I'm confirmed the title, I like it, etc. Or, after speaking to my supervisor, I've decided to change my title to the following. Okay? Everyone got that? Uh, what makes a good question, guys? Well, I'm going to go through this now because I think this is very important. First of all, it's very important that you realize that you need to have an argument. Okay? It should never be a mass of information. And for it to have an argument, you will need to have a thesis, which means an argument, a way of seeing things, and a counter thesis. Now, it may be that you even have three different points of view. But think to yourself now, why don't you have a quick talk with one another, speak to each other about what you're doing. Do you have two, one or more points of view that you can argue? Have a quick chat. We better move on. Can I hear from you then, a couple of you, do you feel that you've got an argument? You feel like you've got an argument. It's absolutely vital. I think the mathematics and science ones are harder to come up with a title. But if you're doing something in the realm of you know, English or PE uh, or, or, or history or psychology, it's usually quite easy to come up with a title. I'll give you an example of the famous debate, Nature Nurture. That is one that I see come out a great deal. Some of the best EPQs I've read are where people say, look at criminality, and they say, are we born criminals, or does society make you a criminal? So you want to choose an area where there are very clearly different points of view which you can look at next to each other and argue. Okay, that's absolutely crucial. Remember that you are answering a question. You have to have an argument, okay? And the next thing to do is to make sure that you can draw conclusions from your question because you have to have some kind of ending where you make up your mind, okay? And the next thing is, do you have evidence? And that's very, very important. So that might be the first things you want to start doing with your supervisor now, is work out, do you have enough research material? Have you chosen something so weird that there's nothing academic? 
You can't just go on Wikipedia and go on, um, you know, random Google searches. This needs to be proper, recognized research by scientists, by top historians, by top academics, okay? It can't be just your mate's opinion or your dad's, yeah? So just make sure that you have enough evidence. Is there data there for you? Okay, and that's what I've saying, yeah. Is this evidence valid and reliable? Well, you're going to get a lot of marks if you're able to critique some of the evidence. I mean, some of you may know that there are lots of scientific studies that are actually really bad and that you can critique, okay? So have a look at the evidence. One of the key skills you'll be looking at is how valid and how reliable it is, okay? Make sure that your question isn't a simple yes, no answer. Okay, you want it to be a gray area that can be seen from a number of, you know, different ways. Uh, you don't want to have a question that just has a simple answer. Otherwise, you won't have stages. You're looking for a multi-layered argument. Okay. Most important of all, guys, obviously, is the idea that the essay needs to, the majority of the essay needs to be analysis and not description. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And also, you need to make sure that it covers all areas of the AOs. That's the different assessment criteria, which I'll introduce you to in a moment. Here are the AOs, guys. AO1, which is manage, okay? This is to do with how well you actually achieve what you say you're going to do. You know, very soon we're going to write a timeline. And you're going to have to plan your whole life and all your commitments, your rugby matches, your family holidays and stuff, and look and say, how am I going to finish this before October? That will be graded primarily through your production log, won't it? And your research diary. Your use of resources, which we've talked about, is making sure that you're using high-level stuff, yeah, and that you footnote and reference and have bibliographies. AO3 is a develop and realize bit of it. And again, this is problem solving, decision making, etc. A lot of that will come from your production log. And AO4 is where you evaluate all aspects of the extended project at the end, okay? And also that takes into account your presentation as well. So you can see there are a lot of different skills that they're looking. So it's a combination of the actual object itself, the research, and that production log is absolutely key. Right. This is probably the most important slide, okay? You do not want the majority of the EPQ to be description. It would be considered a low-level skill. Also, you need to think, is it obvious from the question what you're talking about? So you need to have a clear focus, okay? A lot of people have come to me and said, I'm going to do an EPQ on fashion. Any, any kind of reaction to that? It's ridiculous, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous, yeah? Uh, some people have written, uh, you know, they're going to look at, um, I'll, I'll, we'll look at some titles in a minute, but some people said that they're going to evaluate the overall performance of three American presidents. Isn't that possible? Huge amount, okay, so we're looking for, for focus, aren't we? And I think this is a really good way of looking at guys. You want the right command words in the, in the title. If you have the wrong command words, they are going to make you describe, not analyze. Can you have a quick chat about why you think I don't like any of these command words quickly? One, anyone like to say why, if we have a look at these, we see how, we see command words like described, I really don't like has there been or will there be, what is, how many, when did. <laughs> they have something in common, don't they, all of these different command words. Anyone like to tell me? We all know if from our history and English essays and things like that, that telling a story is the worst thing, isn't it? That doesn't mean that you don't give information, but it's what you do with the information. And this is just giving information. So there's always an element of showing knowledge being important. But obviously other skills, in, and in particular skills of analysis, are much, much more important, are they not? So, have a quick look again. I'm going to ask you the same question. Why are these good command words? Have a quick chat about that. Okay, let's have a look at these then. So, we've got to what extent, how far. 
I think those are quite similar, aren't they? Why do we like those command words? So it, it demands an argument. What kind of argument? What kind of skills are you going to need to show in those? What's that? Ah, you weren't putting your hand up. I wanted you to see that this asks for judgment. It asks for you to make a measurement, doesn't it? Yeah. So this is already going to be higher level skills of evaluation, isn't it? Assess is always a good command word. And significance is a great word, isn't it? Why is that? What is significance? As soon as you ask for the significance, what do you have to do? What do you reckon, James, was significance? If you put that in your title, great word. Again, you're thinking of a hierarchy then, aren't you? You're going to have to put things in order, which calls for judgment, which calls for argumentation, doesn't it? Yeah. So you're going to go beyond description. This one, I have mixed feelings about compare and contrast. Why? I think that one could actually go wrong. You could actually do um, uh, two different things. So my feeling on just compare and contrast is... Mm, I'm not 100% sure about that one. And then these command words are always good. Analyze and evaluate are very good ones. Okay. Um, exposition is the idea of a comprehensive description and explanation of an idea. There is nothing wrong with some exposition in an EPQ. One of the best ones I marked was by a girl who did a study into epigenetics. Epigenetics is a fascinating um, area of biology where they actually study how the experiences of your parents can actually be passed biologically to you. Fascinating idea. So do you remember I told you about uh, the nature-nurture debate? This adds another layer of complication because she did a study into psychopaths. And some people obviously will argue that psychopaths are genetic. Okay? Other people argue they're socially manufactured. Epigenetics gives you another argument. Of course, it's so complicated that you have to have some exposition, don't you? So you can have exposition as long as you apply and argue and analyze later. So analysis is always going to get you more marks than exposition because if we look at analysis, it is about taking things apart and looking at structures, isn't it? being logical, which is actually a key element of deductive reasoning in logic, okay? Bloom's taxonomy, anyone come across this before? I never teach a lesson without thinking about this, guys, yeah? I always think to myself, you know, I'm a literature teacher, so I always think, I need the kids to know the, the plot, don't I? But that's really low-level stuff, isn't it? What I want in a good lesson is to end up here at some point, okay? So evaluation, synthesis, analysis, and application. These are very much higher order skills. So in your project, you want to end up with evaluation. Synthesis is when you take things from many different places. You bring them together. You synthesize them. Analysis is breaking down. Synthesis is bringing together. Application is when you take the theory and you show that you are able to transfer it into a different situation. Why am I telling you this, do you think? What I want you to do straight away. Exactly. How are you going to show these skills in your EPQ instead of just give me loads of information and detail? Okay? So knowledge is very important, no doubt. You'll notice knowledge is at the bottom. You have to have it, don't you? But actually learning things and knowing things is not a high-level skill. Have a look at our lovely EPQ titles over there. Can I ask you for, say, about eight or ten minutes to look at them and critique them, okay, amongst yourselves? Okay, guys, let's go through or we won't have time, okay? Um, we'll do them quite quickly. I think some of them we can dismiss quite quickly, don't you? What about the movies? Yeah, I think straight away that uh, the idea that, you know, the question just has a yes-no answer. Can movies affect people? It's very weak indeed, isn't it? Analyze the reasons for political instability. What do you think of that, James? Would you do it yourself? 
Yeah, and arguably, I mean, 20 years is quite a long time as well, isn't it? You know, that might be a tough one, okay. I'd probably go for one major event or something along those lines, okay. What about what makes a public sector worker? Any comments on that? Too broad. Too broad. Absolutely ridiculous. Doesn't even say where. You know what I mean? Can you imagine like, how many different public sector workers there are in some different countries, etc.? Has Britain changed over the past 50 years? This is one that was actually sent to me. It's just such a ridiculous one, isn't it? Because clearly it has. <laughs> Otherwise it would be identical, wouldn't it? Um, evaluate the contribution made by civilians in the Vietnam War. May not be enough, yeah. You'd have to check your sources. If there was enough, then I think that that would be okay. What about you guys? You might, because your argument would be actually civilians are, are not really um, taken into uh, previous accounts of the Vietnam War, have neglected them, etc. Okay. I mean, a very interesting one that I read was a student who focused on how important Indian soldiers were in the First World War. You know, that's something that's often been left out, isn't it? And so that kind of one is fascinating, where you go and you find new sources, etc. This is the president's one. I've already said I, I don't like this one because you're going to have to look at Lincoln, Roosevelt, and Reagan, all different eras. It's just too much, isn't it? That's like a PhD. Uh, how do computers affect teenagers? It's too general, isn't it? This was a serious one. Should Franco Cocosa have left the X Factor? We have to sort of decide what's the significance of that, really, yeah. Um, how successful was Lenin in managing disunity in the Bolshevik party? You think it's too specific? I think you could probably do it, James. I think you could probably do it, because how successful would call for judgment, wouldn't it, okay? That is actually quite a lot, uh, 1917 to 1921. I think you could probably get away with that. What about this one? Ethnicity and social class have always affected women's lives more than gender. Don't like it? What about the one Ghana, the independence achieved? That's better, yeah. Uh, what about to what extent does completing EPQ prepare 17, 18 year olds for researching at university? Data? Data? Research? It would become assertion, wouldn't it? It would become, you know, like, I think this, I think that, or, you know, such and such opinion is, etc. I suspect there hasn't been enough data into it. You can sometimes be very clever. You know, um, IB, for instance, I think is much better than A-levels for uh, preparing kids for university. And that's why we're doing the EPQ now. And I think you could probably see that. There would be data showing that students who did IB do better at university because they do the extended essay, which is a 5,000-word, heavily researched academic paper. What does that sound like? Uh, the EPQ. So sometimes you might be able to argue that there's similarities in your data for instance, okay? Right, I'll move through those quickly because we've looked at those. And, um, right. Right, so this is what the first uh, piece of paper looks like. If anyone wants to save the uh, production uh, log from me now, you can, all right? So this is the candidate proposal. Notice it says working title, and then my initial resources will be the course of study or areas of personal interest to which the topic relates, and my intended product, okay? So I don't think anyone here is doing an artifact, are you? Is anyone making something or doing something like that, no? You can do that, you know, that, that is possible. But I think we're all going for the 5,000 word research paper, aren't we? Okay, so you'd fill this bit in. That's what you need to do, and you need to give that to your supervisor, okay? They then will fill in part B. And you see the pattern? They have to show um, that it is outside the main course of study. You've all made sure that it, you're not doing something that you've done in class. Is that right, yeah? So it can actually be something you've covered in the curriculum, as long as you can demonstrate that you're extending well beyond it. 
all right? So you know, for instance, psychology students, they, they, they touch upon autism. But we've got some people studying things like, we've got one person who's going to study the use of electric shock therapy in autism, which is very controversial, as I'm sure you realize, yeah. And that's touched upon, but they're going to go well beyond it, okay? So it's important you're able to convince your supervisor that you're going beyond your course, okay? So comment on the suitability of the proposed initial and the research base. This is where you're going to have to make sure that you've got your sources and your data, that you can have enough information to research. And also the feasibility, okay? Is it going to be possible to do this within, you know, what is less than a year? You really are going to need to finish this, finish your first draft by June, okay? And that, then I have to do the final one. So feel sorry for me because I've got 58 of these to look at, yeah? And I will write a few notes. That's why I need you to save this form on the, on, on, uh, on the drive for me so that I'm able to write on it, okay? It would be a lot better if we type it out rather than hand write it out and bits of paper floating everywhere, yeah? Let's try and keep it in one place. It would be a much better. Okay, and then... The next stage is the planning review, and this is to be completed within one week of meeting with the supervisor. So just to sum up, part A, go meet your supervisor, all right? They will fill in part B, and I've got to look at part C, all right? Then you guys will go and do the planning review, and this is meant to be within a week of meeting your um, supervisor. And it's basically looking at the next steps in planning and researching and a, sum a, a summary of the comments from your supervisor, what they've said to you, and then the modifications, do you see that, that you'll do to your title. Now, some of you are really smart and really well organized and stuff like that. And um, you may not want to do many modifications. But it, if possible, try and fill in all elements of the production log. I'm not going to suggest fake difficulty, but I'm going to remind you that if you actually overcome difficulties, that gives you more marks, doesn't it, in the develop and realize section. So sometimes it's almost like it might be worth your while to say I've changed things, if you get my drift. Timeline is here, guys, okay? Um, if I just quickly point out a few things, yeah? So we're, we're really at this stage now, aren't we? We're doing the initial ideas over here. Planning review, we won by the end of this month, don't we, okay? And then the midterm review, this is the next big section. Midterm review is where you will lock in your title, okay? So that's something you'll decide with your supervisor. I'm going to ask all supervisors to have this piece of paperwork done by January. So what are you doing in the meantime between these dates then? Yeah. Mainly researching, thinking things through, beginning um, the plan, thinking about the structure, note taking, uh, having a, uh, a really good uh, diary that keeps a, a record of the different directions that you went in. Okay. Then obviously you'll get, um, the next big one will be the feedback in June. And then over the summer, you want to draft it, don't you? The final draft will be end of September. And then we'll look to do our presentations in mid-October. And then after that, you will hand it in and complete all the summary and reflection, etc. So any questions about that? Does that timeline look quite clear? Yeah? In year 13, it's completely differently. We're aiming for you to have finished everything by February. Okay, so it's a tight one, okay? I haven't done a timeline for that because we've said in year 13 the students just need to get down to it. So really, if I were you now, I would have your midterm review done by, say, uh, early November. Uh, first draft in, I'd say, before Christmas or uh, maybe just after in January and finishing up in February. You do not want it to interfere with your A2 exams. That's what I will say to you guys is that, especially the year 12s here, that you guys are all doing two and a half, three hour exams now. And you've gone back to old A levels that I did. You've got two years of work. The exams are going to be much harder than they used to be. There's a lot more studying. So we don't want anything interfering with them. 
I don't ever want to pretend that uh, that the EPQ is, is as important as A-levels. It is. Okay. It's window dressing, isn't it, at the end of the day? It's decoration. The A-levels uh, always have to take priority, okay? And I guess that's it for me for today.